if uh, if everyone could take their seat, please. All right. Heck, can everyone hear me? Is this mic on? Yep. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, welcome to the uh, final session for the, is it the 93rd annual meeting? Okay, lost track. <laughs> I haven't been here 93 years. So um, we have quite a bit of business to get down to this morning, and uh, Jim uh, was just mentioning to me that he did not have any opening remarks, but we will have some closing remarks when we go through the, all the formal process. So uh, without any... Any further ado, um, I think, Steve, we can get started. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we have prepared for your consideration a list of uh, actions and decisions to be taken uh, that have uh, arisen during the week as well as the customary ones for Friday morning of the annual meeting. So as a lead-in, I'll note the actions already taken by the Commission during the meeting. The Commission approved the meeting minutes from the last year's annual meeting and also approved uh, using the new meeting report format which we pioneered with the uh, interim meeting of last year. The Commission approved the budget for fiscal 2017 and reviewed the prospective budgets for fiscal 2018 and 2019. The Commission approved the appointment of the auditor, that's the person who audits our books. The Commission approved a method of accounting for carryover, which separates the survey from the rest of our operations for a clearer accounting of survey costs. The Commission directed the staff with respect to the survey design in Area 2A for 2017, and that was described by Dr. Webster yesterday afternoon. And the Commission directed the staff to carry out the second performance review in accordance with the terms of reference that are listed in the paper in the meeting documents. So those things were already done. Now we turn to the things which are yet to be decided, starting with the 2017 catch limits. So we'll go through each of the regulatory areas in, in uh, order from south to north starting with 2A, noting that the catch limit approved for 2A includes the combined sport and commercial allocations. Uh, the 2016 catch limit in Area 2A was 1.14 million pounds. The blue line uh, for this year in the harvest uh, decision table was 0.75 million pounds. The status quo SPR line was 0.84 million pounds. Both conference board and PAG recommended a catch limit for area 2A of 1.33 million pounds. All right, thanks very much, Steve. Um, I'll just see if there is a uh, proposal for uh, catch limits for 2A. Right, Mr. Chair. Bob. <clears throat> I would move that the uh, harvest limit in 2A be 1,330,000 pounds. Is there a seconder for them? I will second that. Mr. Chair, I'd like to speak to, to that. Um, area 2A is at the tail end of the distribution of the stock and is a small portion of the total biomass. And as such, a higher harvest of Area 2A would not ex be expected to have a significant negative impact on the overall uh, users. Additionally, the uh, harvests that are being um, noted in the uh, San Juans as well as uh, Juan de Fuca and areas of Westport are being achieved on a uh, ever quicker fashion um, in terms of uh, days available for the public, which indicates that the uh, the resource is uh, um, would is perhaps healthier than our, our survey currently is showing and. Uh, the last comment I'd, I'd note is we did approve an expanded survey in, the, survey in that area to get at the heart of, of what is going on in that area. I would caution the public, though, that uh, surveys cut both ways. If the numbers come in uh, lower, then uh, they're going to be a better database to support uh, uh, lower uh, limits in this area. 
and conversely, if they come in higher, then we will be very pleased. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thanks very much, Bob. Um, all in favor of 1.33? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next up is Area 2B. The 2016 cash limit in 2B was 7.3 million pounds. The blue line level was 4.72 million pounds. Status quo SPR came in at 5.28 million pounds. The conference board recommended a catch limit of 7.9 million pounds in area 2B, and the PAG recommended 7.5 million pounds for 2B. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, I make a motion that for um, area 2B that the catch limit be at set at 7.45. Second, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'd like to speak a little bit to uh, that proposal. Um, area 2B's 2016 survey has increased 61% since 2006, while 2B removals have decreased by 46% over the same time frame. In the commercial, WP, WPUE is at record highs. In 2016, it was the highest value among all regulatory areas. 2B has not experienced any of the declines in its survey or fishery indices that most other areas have experienced over the last 10 years. While our indices have been on this positive 10-year trend, our total removals have occurred during a period when Canada's total removals have ranged from 7.71 million to uh, uh, about 15 million pounds. The catch limit Canada is proposing is at the end, is at the lower end of this uh, of this range of the total mortality. Mr. Yes, Jim. Yes, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe that our best information we have from our scientific group suggests that we have a coastwide stock. I think that the information that we have in that coastwide stock, which is in the blue book and which was brought to our attention by public comments through the week, uh, notes that the stock remains at a relatively low, perhaps stabilizing level, but relatively low. And any projections by that, by the, our scientific staff, suggest that re total removals, when they get above 40 million pounds, are likely to see declines in the future in this stock. I don't think there's a tail end to this stock. I don't think there's a head end to it. I think all parts of the, of the stock, every area, has to contribute to rebuilding the stock from the low level that it's at now. I think that the spawning products that come from 2B are a necessary part for rebuilding the stock. For, the, for that reason, I'm not going to support this motion. All right. Thanks very much, Jim. Um, all in favor of the uh, proposal for 7.45. Say in favor? Aye. 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 So for the record that it's five in favor, one opposed. Next up is area 2C. And note that the 2C total includes the commercial and recreational charter catch in the uh, catch limit that you set. The 2016 catch limit was 4.95 million pounds. The blue line for this year was 4.08 million pounds and the status quo SPR line was 4.69 million pounds. The conference board recommends a catch limit for area 2C of 5.4 million pounds and the PAG recommends 5.3 million pounds in 2C. Thank you. Linda? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move an FCY for area 2C of 5.25 million pounds. And if I could speak to that a little bit. Just see if there's a seconder. I would second that. Mr. Chairman, and I believe a lot of the same um, comments that you made for area 2B are relevant to area 2C in that even though I would agree with um, Commissioner Balsinger that it is an area-wide stock, 
that the contribution of all areas is important to the health of the stock overall. We have seen a very strong response and rebuilding in across area two since taking significant reductions in those areas some years ago. The weight surveyed weight per unit effort in area 2C is the highest of any area across the fishery. That increase since 2009 is 87% increase in the weight per unit effort. One of the goals I think that I brought to this meeting was to seek a more consistent harvest rate or fishing intensity across area two. And while they are still not consistent across yet, this takes us a step closer to doing that. I would note that this is more conservative than the numbers set by the PAG or the conference board, um, but I have also heard from Area 2C fishermen a strong commitment to slow rebuilding of the stock or to conservative catch limits to ensure we continue to rebuild stock um, while setting the catch limits at a level that recognizes the strong rebuilding that we're seeing. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. All in favor of the uh, proposal for 2C for 5.25 in favor? Aye. Aye. So six in support. Thank you. Next up is area 3A. The catch limit approved for 3A also includes both commercial and the recreational charter catch. Catch limit for 2016 was 9.6 million pounds. Blue line for this year was 9.57 million pounds and the status quo SPR line was 10.88 million pounds. Conference board recommends a catch limit for area 3A of 10.225 million pounds as does the PAG. Does anyone want to speak to that? Mr. Chair, uh, <clears throat> I would recommend uh, a motion on uh, in this area of 10 million pounds. If I can get a second, I'll speak to that. Yes, certainly, Bob. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, this allocation uh, is uh, precautionary. It represents uh, an amount that is less than the allocation that results from a F46 apportionment. It's less than the conference board and PAG's number, and it's uh, uh, quite uh, lower than the status quo SPR. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons uh, I've gone to 10 million is that uh, there's a catch share plan that the in this area for the charter boat fishery, and there's uh, things are relaxed a bit when we get over uh, at the 10 million level so that the uh, the closures on, on that fleet um, are relaxed. And otherwise, I, I might support a more conservative number, but uh, this area has had uh, has six survey station areas, and all of those areas were up this year quite nicely, other than Shillikoff area. And I think we've had two years uh, of up on the um, um, the commercial numbers and, and, uh, and up on the uh, survey numbers. So, Mr. Chairman, that completes my comments. Thanks very much, Bob. All in favor of adopting a, uh, a limit of 10? Aye. 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 Six in support? None opposed? So 3B, you want me to make a motion on that? Next up is area 3B. The 2016 catch limit was 2.71 million pounds. The blue line for this year was 3.14 million pounds and the status quo SPR line was 3.53 million pounds. Conference board recommends a catch limit for area 3B of 3.335 million pounds and PAG recommends a catch limit of 3.53 million pounds for area 3B. Thank you, Steve. Is there a proposal? Mr. Chair, I <clears throat> would move that the harvest limit be 3,140,000 pounds in 3B. I'll second that, Bob. Uh, to speak to that, uh, Mr. Chair, this area has shown two years in a row of increases of commercial CPUE as well as the uh, weight per unit of effort in the set line survey. 
Um, I note that the conference board uh, tried to blend this with the status quo uh, SPR. At this level, the, it's, there's a nice increase of almost 10%. Um, I'm not feeling real robust to go up to a 20% increase in this area since there's been only two ups after 14 years of, of downs. So that's where I'm at, Mr. Chair. All in support? All right. Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Next up is area 4A. The catch limit in 2016 for 4A was 1.39 million pounds. The blue line for this year was 1.26 million pounds, and the status quo SPR line came at 1.43 million pounds. Conference board recommends a catch limit for area 4A of 1.345 million pounds and PAG recommends a catch limit of 1.43 million pounds for Area 4A. Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I recommend an FCUI of 1.39 million pounds for Area 4A. I would second that. Thank you. Um, the allocation that I'm suggesting from this for this area is the same as last year's allocation, which does put it below the status quo SPR um, of F46 for that area. We've seen some sign of stability, um, but the weight per unit effort in that area is still quite a bit below where it has been in a historic past, our sense is that we need to be conservative, and I would note that this number is between the numbers recommended by the conference board and the PEG. Thank you, Linda. Um, all in favor? Aye. Six in support, none opposed. Next is area 4B. Last year's catch limit was 1.14 million pounds. The blue line is 1.12 million pounds for this year, and status quo SPR line is 1.25 million pounds. Conference board recommends a catch limit for area 4B of 1.185 million pounds, and PAG recommends a catch limit of 1.25 million pounds in area 4B. Does anyone want to speak to them? Oh Linda? I would recommend an FCUI of 1.14 million pounds for this area. I'll second that. Thank you. The, my, my rationale for this number is much the same as the Area 4A FCUI, that as is the case with Area 4A, this area seems to have stabilized, but have stabilized at a relatively low level. We've seen some ups and some downs. Um, so I'm recommending the same number f catch limit f as we had in this area last year until we see a more positive increasing trend. Thank you, Linda. All in favor of 1.14? Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Next is area 4CDE, which is treated as a unit for catch limit purposes. The uh, sublimits for 4C, 4D, and 4E uh, will, will be populated as soon as you have chosen a number for 4C, D, and E altogether. Last year's catch limit in 4CDE was 1.66 million pounds. The blue line for this year is at 1.55 million pounds, and status quo SPR line is at 1.92 million pounds. Conference board recommends a catch limit for 4 cd e of 1.735 million pounds, and the PAG recommends a catch limit of 1.66 million pounds for area 4 CDE. Thank you, Steve. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I would move that the harvest limit be 1,700,000 pounds in 4C, D, and E. I'll second that, Bob. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, this proposed uh, area is uh, 40,000 pounds relative to last year, not a big increase. There are many social and cultural economic reasons that uh, recommend an increase uh, even higher than this. Um, but the numbers just aren't uh, there quite yet to, to get excited to, to move things up. I'm betting on lower 
bycatch numbers, we uh, had a, a, a good presentation from the Amendment 80 fleet that uh, where their numbers had come in quite a bit lower than uh, the year before and that they expect uh, two to four additional vessels to participate in their deck sorting and hopefully uh, this will give us some relief. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, all in favor of the recommendation? Aye. Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And as you can see on the screen and on the webinar, the approval of 1.7 million pounds for Area 4 CDE results in 0.75 million pounds in 4C, 0.75 million pounds in 4D, and 0.2 million pounds in 4E. And the total of the catch limits you have approved uh, come to 31.4 million pounds. The next decision points are the fishing period recommendations. First up is the 2A non-treaty fishery, commercial fishery. And the Secretariat has recommended dates which correspond to last year's dates. They begin at the last Wednesday in June and it includes subsequent Wednesdays every two weeks after that for as long as the, uh, there is allocation left to fish in the last several years that's been either two or three openings. And so the dates are displayed on the screen. They begin on the 28th of June, 2017. Following dates are the 12th of July, the 26th of July, the 9th of August, the 23rd of August, 6th of September, and the 20th of September. And each of these opening dates would be a 10-hour uh, limit, a uh, 10-hour period with uh, limits according to license. The conference board and PAG uh, did not make a recommendation uh, on the season dates for 2A non-treaty commercial fishery. Thank you, Steve. Bob? <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Chair, I would recommend uh, the IPHC Secretariat uh, dates for openings beginning on June 20th and, ex and uh, as uh, explained by Steve, uh, for the uh, Area 2A non-treaty commercial fishing openings, and they will be 10-hour uh, opening limits. Your seconder? Second. I don't have any comment. No comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six, Aye. six in favor, none opposed. Okay, next up is the uh, 2A treaty and incidental fishery, the 2B fishery, commercial fishery, and the commercial fisheries in Alaska, all of which uh, operate on various quota programs. So they may be taken uh, together or separately as you desire. Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a two motions maybe to handle this agenda item, but I would move for all the areas, 2A, Treaty and Incidental, 2B, 2C, 3A, 3B, 4A through E, an opening date of March 11th and a closing date of November 7th. I would second that. Thank you. I, I would like to speak to that a little bit if I could. Yes, by all means. Um, as far as the, the opening date, I know there was, there's, there's always interest from the fleet in having the longest possible season. Um, also from at least the eastern end of Alaska, there's a lot of interest in having the opening date as early as possible to minimize interactions with sperm whales and sperm whale depredation during the fishing season. We understand that an opening date of March 4th, as was recommended by the conference board for one, creates problems for processors. Um, for two, it doesn't sound like regs can be in place in time. I've suggested the 11th. It's not good tides. We usually try to set the opening date around small tides. Um, but the majority of the effort that we see on opening date is actually in the sable fish fishery, which is tied to this opening date that we set for halibut. And that has tides play less of a role in that fishery. I'd like to try this this year. We've stuck with a Saturday because that's important to the processors. We've picked a midpoint between the two dates recommended to us. Um, if we get pushback about tides being a problem, we'll go back to looking at the best tides as opposed to picking the, the date that seems to 
meet everybody's needs on timing. So that's why I've suggested that opening date, the closure date is an important date for getting the information into our stock assessment team at the IPHC so they can do the analysis they need to do in time for our interim meeting. Thanks very much, Linda. So all in favor of an opening date of March the 11th and a closure date of November the 7th? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed? Hear me? Oh, I sorry. I, just one more motion on the closure, if I could. OK, and what, one other motion I wanted to make, or a note. Um, we had a lot of interest from area for CD&E and having their season stay open later than November 7th because their harbor is still locked in ice. When the rest of the fleet starts fishing, the leading, later closing date can make a really big difference in their ability to fully harvest their catch limit. We're not able at this time to extend that closure date and force cd and &E because of the tie between halibut and black cod um, closing dates, opening dates, and also the overlap of those areas not exactly matching up. But I would like to request that by next year we have information brought forward from the NIMPS um, regulatory people on how we might be able to achieve a different closing date for area 4C, D, and E in the future. I would second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six in favor, not opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I apologize for not introducing the conference board and PAG recommendations for the season dates. Uh, moving on, the next uh, items of decision are concerning the catch share plans in the various regulatory areas. The first is in area 2A, the Pacific Fishery Management Council catch share plan for all of the two area sub tax, including uh, non-treaty commercial, treaty Indian directed, treaty Indian Ceremonial and, ceremonial and subsistence, and the fishery incidental to the sable fish fishery, as well as sport tax for the three states, Washington, Oregon, and California. The numbers projected on the screen are those resulting from the catch limit that you approved from Area 2A, distributed according to the Pacific Fishery Management Council catch share plan. Bob? Mr. Chair, I would uh, move to accept the uh, Pacific Fishery Management Council's uh, catch share plan as outlined up on the screen and uh, on our notes here. I'm not going to read all the, the harvest limits, but they are up there for the public uh, uh, to see, I guess, on the webinar as well. And uh, this includes uh, non-treaty and then some sports uh, TACs off Washington, Oregon, and California. Is there a seconder? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. And for the benefit of those listening, I'll read the numbers uh, that are approved. That is uh, 265,402 pounds for the non-treaty commercial fishery. 435,900 pounds for the Treaty Indian Directed Fishery, 29,600 pounds for the Treaty Indian Ceremonial and Subsistence Fishery, and 70,000 pounds incidental to the Sable Fish Fishery. Those are all the commercial TACs for Area 2A. The sport TACs are 237,762 pounds for Washington, 256,700 pounds. 57 pounds for Oregon, and 34,580 pounds for California. Again, these are the numbers that result from the 2A overall catch limit as uh, apportioned by the Pacific Fishery Management Council catch share plan, which you have just approved. Next up is the uh, accepting the combined 2B commercial and sport catch limit. And the way this works is that the Department of Fisheries and Oceans uh, divides the 2B catch between commercial and sport, and the uh, current ratio for that is 
Thanks, Steve. Um, that sharing arrangement is no different than uh, the arrangement we had in place in 2016, and I propose to carry forward again for 2017. Does anyone want to second that? I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next is the uh, North Pacific Fishery Management Council catch share plan for areas 2C and 3A. The numbers are uh, displayed on the screen and on the webinar. I'll read them out for the record. That the um, in 2C, based on the catch limit that you approved for area 2C, the, the North Pacific uh, Fishery Management Council catch share plan allocates. 4,212,000 pounds to uh, the commercial catch in Area 2C accounts for 120,000 pounds for commercial wastage and uh, allocates 915,000 pounds to the recreational charter catch and wastage. In Area 3A, the numbers come out at 7,739,000 pounds for the commercial catch 370,000 pounds accounting for commercial wastage and 1,890,000 pounds uh, for a recreational charter catch and the wastage associated with the recreational charter. Thanks, Steve. Linda? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we adopt these management plans that have been put forward by the North Pacific Council for sharing the catch in 2C and 3A and the numbers that are up on the board here. Thank you very much, Linda. Is there a seconder for that? I would second that. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up is the North Pacific Fishery Management Council catch your plan for Area 4 CDE, which we discussed briefly uh, when we were, you were approving the catch limits. Uh, the numbers displayed on the screen uh, go out to a couple more decimal places than I read out before. So the catch your plan uh, apportions the catch limit for 4 CDE to 4 C, 4 D, and 4 E with uh, different rules about which uh, quota can be fished in which area. The overall numbers for the area are 0.7522 million pounds in both 4C and 4D and 1.957 million pounds in 4E. Thank you, Steve. Bob? <clears throat> so, Mr. Chair, I, I would uh, move adoption of these numbers as expressed by the Secretariat of uh, 752,200 in both uh, D and C, and in E, uh, 196,700 pounds. I'll second that. Did so I get it right? For 4E, that's 1957? 1957, correct. Did I say that Is there a seconder? I think Jake, you did. Yeah, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next, we move to the regulatory proposals. First one is the proposal A, which came from the IPHC staff, recommending that uh, all commercial halibut be landed head-on and removing the 24-inch minimum size limit. The conference board recommended a proposal, I'll read their uh, recommendation, was made, they supported proposal A. In addition, the motion requested that an exemption for frozen at sea halibut be made. The exemption for delivering head off frozen at sea halibut will maintain the 24 inch minimum size limit described in IPHC regulations. And the PAG made a similar recommendation recommending that the Commission support Proposal A with an exemption of the frozen at sea fisheries in all areas. That exemption will allow halibut to be landed head off and will adhere to the current minimum 24 inch regulation. Thank you, Steve. Linda? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move to adopt Proposal A to require all commercial Pacific halibut to be landed and weighed with their heads attached for data reporting purposes and to only be subject to a 32-inch minimum size limit except that vessels that freeze halibut at sea may deliver their frozen halibut shoreside with the head removed and a 24-inch minimum size limit. I would second that. Thank you. If I could. Can you speak to that? Speak just just briefly. The the intent of the motion is to address some discrepancies we're seeing in weight um, between fish that are headed and the um, extrapolation error that happens when we go back to full-size fish. My intent is also to make sure there's only one measurement per product form. So that this motion will also encompass proposal P, which requested a clarification of the size limit. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation, Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next up is Proposal B, which is a staff proposal to remove the IPHC closed area from regulations. The conference board uh, would, um, should say it endorsed it, and I'll note that they uh, discussed the idea of the closed area as a nursery and felt it should be closed to all other fisheries rather than allowing the longline halibut fleet to fish in the area. So the motion failed in the conference board. I should say they didn't endorse it. They recommended not passing it. And the PAG endorsed the proposal to remove the IPHC closed area. Mr. Chair? Bob, go ahead. So on, on uh, the staff recommendation B, they recommend that we uh, remove the nursery area, area. And under the stakeholder regulatory proposals G, there's a request to close all fisheries in the, the nursery area. Um, that would uh, need to be, if we agreed on that, we'd need to send that request to the North Pacific Council. Um, I'm not prepared to give up the nursery area at this time, and so I would suggest that we stand down on any action regulatory in this, in this area and request the staff to come back with some information and um, this not limited to, but uh, including uh, what our observer programs have shown in terms of juvenile abundance in this area, what the NIMPS uh, uh, trawl survey shows on an annual basis in this area. And I know that at one time the commission had a boat called the Valorous, it was probably 30 years ago, uh, do a survey up there. And I think there was another survey more recent than that by itself. So whatever information in our catalog of information at the in Seattle, if they could please bring that to us for a review for next year on this issue. That's what I would recommend. Thank you, Bob. Um, you're proposing to uh, defer this for now. That is correct with uh, information request to the staff. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up is the agency regulation proposal from the National Marine Fisheries Service that has to do with fishing in multiple regulatory areas in Alaska. Uh, staff, the conference board, and the PAG all recommend approval of this regulation proposal. Linda? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we adopt this regulatory proposal. Um, I believe it will clarify regulations re relative to fishing in multiple areas. It would also allow, once electronic monitoring um, is fully in place in Alaska, fishermen who have an observer OREM to fish multiple areas under the new NIMS regulations. Thank you, Linda. All in favor of adopting this motion? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up in the list are proposals D, E, and F, which were all withdrawn by the proponent during the conference board meeting this week. And pending other direction from the commission, uh, we will not consider them further. 
And following that is Proposal G, which was Commissioner Alverson mentioned a moment ago, closure of the nursery area. And this proposal was to close the IPHC closed area to all gears. The staff recommends referring this to the North Pacific Council as a matter for their jurisdiction. The conference board recommended deferring action on this and the PAG recommended referring it to the North Pacific Council. The um, conference board uh, noted that they had a lengthy discussion regarding other fisheries in the closed area, concern over implications if trawl, longline, and pot fleets are displaced from this area, and they need to understand effort and catch in the area. The motion was tabled uh, for, no, for no further action at the conference board. Bob? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I, I, would, I would note that our action taken under the, this, uh, the staff recommendation clarifies our direction on this. Thank you, Commissioner Alvesen and Mr. Chair. So we'll note that uh, action on this is direction to staff is the same as your action on Proposal B. The next two uh, proposals, H and I, uh, we can take together. They both uh, have to do with uh, sport fishery in Alaska. The staff recommends that they be referred to the North Pacific Council. Uh, the PAG concurred with that recommendation and uh, the conference board took no action on these two measures. Yes, go ahead, Linda. Just a, a comment on that one that I uh, do recognize these are under the jurisdiction of the council. I will have a motion later this morning uh, relative to these concerns about growing unguided, assisted unguided effort. Thank you, Linda. I think there's a consensus on that approach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next two are uh, J and K, uh, also relating to the sport fishery. J was the elimination of the law requiring skin to be left on Pacific halibut, and K was allowing filleted halibut in the sport fishery. The staff recommended no, the PAG recommended no on these, and the uh, conference board took no action. Bob, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we need to take affirmative action, but uh, I'd move to support the staff recommendation on this. Did you need agreement on that? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have consensus on it, so thanks, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the next uh, three proposals, L, M, and N, have to do with uh, charter uh, regulations in Alaska. The uh, staff, as we did with H and I, recommended referring these to the North Pacific Fishery Management Council, uh, as did the PAG, and Conference Board took no action on these proposals. Linda? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would note on these that the um, U.S. in Alaska has a process that allows the stakeholders in the charter industry to work together to come to consensus on the measures that would work best for their sector to live under catch limits as assigned on an annual basis. Um, that this process is run by the council and then referred to us and that, that these proposals should have gone through that process rather than going through this process. So I would agree Agree. We we would not take action on these, um, and we would refer people to submit these kind of proposals to the council in the future. Thank you, Linda. Um, well, I think we have consensus on each one of these three as well, for L, M, and N. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up is Proposal O, which had two parts. Uh, the overall theme is clarifying the pot gear re requirements. Uh, the staff recommended on Part 1 that we refer to this to the National Marine Fisheries Service for a better explanation. We have received a, a better explanation or more explanation from the National Marine Fisheries Service, which has been posted at the website 
in the meeting documents for this meeting as info paper number five. And the staff recommended a no on part two. And part two had to do with uh, uh, pots capable of catching halibut carried on board a halibut vessel. The conference board um, considered this. And I'll read you there. Uh, they actually changed the motion during the course of their meeting. The proposal was modified from its original form for clarity and intent. A motion was made to allow commercial halibut fishermen to have aboard and deploy shellfish pots during the halibut season as long as those pots have rigid perimeter openings that do not exceed 36 inches. This proposal does not alter or supersede any other regulations in place for the area the pots are deployed. Due to the last minute modification by the author of the proposal and maker of the motion, Language was included that clarified the staff would review the proposal in 2017 and potentially take action in 2018. And that was passed by the conference board. The uh, PAG recommended no action on the second part of Proposal O and on So hopefully people can use that to gain clarity on part one of this proposal. Relative to part two, my understanding is the proposer intends to work on more specific language as noted by the conference board, um, that they will be bringing that back, hopefully working with IPHC staff to make sure by next year if they choose to move this proposal, there's good clarity on what exactly they're proposing. So I suggest we take no action on this at this point and expect to see this back next year. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Again, we have consensus on that approach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up is Proposal P, which is a, a clarification of the size limit, specifically when you measure the size limit and how many times it might be measured. Uh, the staff uh, recommended yes, unless Proposal A was adopted in its entirety. The conference board recommended yes. And uh, the PAG noted that this proposal was noted in the discussion regarding Proposal A. Linda? Mr. Chairman, my understanding is we did incorporate this request of having one measurement per fish um, and product form into our action on the staff's Proposal A so that we don't need to take any further action. Yes, that's correct, and we have consensus on that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we understand that was addressed in A, as, as described by Commissioner Benkin. Next up are other regulatory proposals. The first are the charter management measures in both 2C and 3A. These Measures are recommended to you by the North Pacific Fishery Management Council, and they are based on the catch limits approved in those areas. Are these the correct ones? I need them. And for the record, I'll read them out so everybody knows what they are. What's on the screen are the, the charter management measures for 2016. So starting with Area 2C, based on the catch limit that you have approved for Area 2C, the, National, uh, the North Pacific Fishery Management Council recommends charter halibut manager, management measures as follows. A one fish daily limit, a reverse slot limit of less than 44 inches or greater than 80 inches. So that means the angler retains the fish at less than, 40, less than or equal to 44 inches or greater than or equal to 80 inches, and no annual limit. Thank you, Steve. Linda? 
Mr. Chairman, I would move that we adopt the these management measures that have been developed by the Charter Stakeholder Committee and referred to us by the North Pacific Council, just read by our Assistant Director. Thank you, Linda. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up, in a similar way, our charter management measures for Area 3A. Based on the catch limit that you have approved for Area 3A, the North Pacific Fishery Management Council recommends these charter halibut management measures. A two fish daily bag limit, a maximum size limit of less than or, 80, or equal to 28 inches on one fish of those two, a four fish annual limit with a recording requirement, one trip per vessel per day, one trip per charter halibut permit per day, a Wednesday closure all season, and three Tuesday closures taking place between July 18th and August 1st of 2017. I can read those again if you like. Thank you, Steve. Bob? Mr. Chair, Steve, those are all updated based on the uh, 10 million pounds that we approved in, that, in 3A? Yes, thank you, Commissioner Alderson. That uh, all these, both for 2C and 3A, the measures that I read out to you are the updated measures based on the catch limit that you approved. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move to adopt uh, the charter management measures for 3A uh, and the two fish uh, daily bag limits as explained by uh, Steve and that are up on the board here. And I'll, I'll second that, Bob. Or as he read them in the record. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So that was the charter management measures for 2C and 3A. Uh, next is a request or uh, regulation change uh, mentioned yesterday that uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada has developed an electronic log option. So this would be direction to the staff to work with DFO to develop the appropriate regulatory language to allow the use of an electronic log option in Area 2B in 2017. Right. Go ahead, Jake. If I may, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'd just like to make a quick comment. As many of you know that Industry with our service provider, Archipelago Marine Research, has just developed an e-log program um, along with industry, and it's been piloted. And um, it should provide a more timely and accurate data into the future here. We're quite excited about it, and we are now hopeful that the IPHC and the DFO staff will work together to make this logging up e-log option possible and I believe even in this short period of time that I think some great progress has already been made. Thank you very much Jake. Um, so basically um, Canada is recommending that DFO staff work with IHP staff to implement electronic log books for Pacific halibut fisheries in Area 2B in 2017. Um, including but not limited to uh, any, necessary, any necessary updates to IPHC regulations such as Section 16, Paragraph 5 through 7 on Canadian logs to reflect both uh, electronic and paper log books. We also um, go on to coordination with IPH sta IPHC staff on data fields captured in electronic log book to ensure inclusion of the information listed in the IPHC regulation 16.6 noted below and any other necessary fields as mutually agreed and um, also coordination with IHP staff on the logistics of the data delivery to IP, IPHC including the timing of and security of data delivery to IPHC and the access to electronic log books by IPHC port samplers at the time of landings. So um, I don't think we have that language right now do we Steve or do we? Uh, n no, Mr. Chair, we don't have it for display, but we will take the language that you've just read out and incorporate that into the action. Thank you, Steve. All in favor? Do you need a second? Pardon me? Did you need a second? Skinson, sorry. 
We have, <coughs> excuse me, we have consensus on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So consensus on uh, direction to staff as you have just read out on uh, regulations incorporating the, elect use, the option to use electronic logs in Area 2B. Next up are the other actions after we've done, those are all the regulatory measures that we've been talking about. So the other actions that we have uh, accumulated during the course of the week. The first one is the rules of procedure as described by Dr. Wilson yesterday. The staff asks you to approve the amended rules of procedure, uh, noting that they do get reviewed at, uh, at a minimum of every two years. The conference board and the PAG, as well as MSAB and RAB, uh, all endorsed the changes to the rules of procedure. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move that we approve those rules of procedure uh, as uh, uh, reviewed by PAG Conference Board and by the Commission yesterday uh, and appreciating the input from the legal advisors from both parties. I would second that. We have consensus on that particular item. Steve? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next up is a series of motions that have been proposed by various commission members during the course of the week. We do have the text, and if there are any changes to the text, please let us know. And for the benefit of those uh, listening, I'll read the text as we have it. The first one is that the commission initiate a process to develop alternative, alternative biologically-based stock distribution strategies for consideration by the Commission and its advisory bodies. The Commission requests the assistance of the MSAB in initiating this process. Linda? Mr. Chairman, I would move to adopt the language that was just read by number two. Thank you, and we have consensus on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next one is, um, I'll just read out. Whereas staff and the Commission's advisory processes have demonstrated that eBio is outdated and inconsistent with current assessment results, noting the Blue Book, page 72, and whereas numerous elements of the current harvest policy are reliant on eBio, and whereas the Commission has agreed that the current harvest policy is considered to be outdated, noting uh, uh, the inter, uh, interim meeting report, items 21 and 22, Canada recommends that reference to all elements of the current harvest policy reliant on eBio be eliminated, such as the blue line. Canada recommends that the status quo SPR can serve as an interim handrail that allows all participants to gauge this and future year's catch limit discussions in comparison to previous years. Thank you, Steve. I move that this be adopted as described, and uh, we have consensus on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next is a motion I'll read. Whereas the Commission has indicated its interest in clearer accounting for all mortality, and whereas Canada has put forward catch limit allocation principles proposing that catch limits include all sources of mortality for each regulatory area, and whereas the Commission requested that the IPHC Secretariat provide further explanation at this meeting, Canada recommends that the presentation of harvest advice and the negotiation of catch limits be changed to include all sport and wastage removals in the FCEY for the 2018 annual meeting cycle as a step towards more comprehensive and responsible management of the resource that will result in the negotiation of TCEYs. Thank you, Steve. I move that this be adopted as described and that we have consensus on this as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Next are actually two motions that can be considered together. The first comes from the Commission members. Whereas Canada acknowledges the importance of the Council, we're working cooperatively with the, the Council, meaning the North Pacific Fishery Management Council in the United States. 
working cooperatively with the Commission on Halibut Management, Canada recommends that the existing ad hoc meetings between the North Pacific Fishery Council members and the Commission be formalized into a standing body that meets regularly to provide direction to the development of a coordinated relationship between the Council and the Commission. Such a body should consist of commissioners from both countries and Council leadership. And I'll note that the Conference Board also recommended to you this motion, the, which is listed as number six on your screen. Existing ad hoc meetings between Council members and the Commission, the Conference Board recommended that existing ad hoc meetings between Council members and the Commission be formalized into a standing body that meets regularly to provide direction to the development of a coordinated relationship between the Council and the Commission. Such a body should consist of commissioners from both countries and Council leadership. So the last part was what was recommended to you by the Conference Board. Thank you, Steve. Um, I move that we adopt um, number five as described and it incorporates the intent and purpose of the Conference Board uh, motion as well. I appreciate the uh, Conference Board taking this up and having a uh, thorough discussion around this particular item and support of the concept that's captured in number five. Second. We have consensus. We have consensus on this item, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next up, whereas the Commission noted the potential implications of periodic survey expansion on the stock assessment model and apportionment arising from the survey, and this is uh, the report of the interim meeting, and whereas the Commission recommends that the IPHC Secretary develop an information paper associated with the survey expansion, and whereas there are implications of survey expansion in 2B, for species of conservation concern and protected areas, and whereas Canada would like to better understand the value of additional survey information, Canada requests that IPHC staff work with domestic agencies and interests to explore options to the proposed survey expansion to minimize impacts on species of conservation concern and area closures before proceeding with any planned survey expansion in 2B. That's the text of the motion. I'll note for the audience that uh, survey expansion in 2B is planned for 2018. Thanks for that clarification, uh, Steve, on the timing of the proposed expansion. Um, the intent of this is to work with uh, IPHC staff, and I'm sure that uh, we've had a long-term uh, collaborative efforts between the Department of Fisheries and Oceans and IPH sta IPHC staff, and look forward to working on this particular issue as well. Um, so I move that this be adopted, Second. and uh, we have consensus on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next motion has to do with how we describe uh, stock distribution, and it reads, whereas apportionment, the term apportionment, has connotations broader than stock distribution that are not reflective of its meaning in the IPHC context, Canada recommends that the term apportionment be replaced with the terms stock distribution or stock distribution modeling. I move that this be adopted as drafted. I have a seconder from Linda. We have consensus on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next is a motion concerning um, sport fishery in Alaska in particular. The U.S. highlights concerns expressed to the Commission by guided sports group, sport groups regarding the increase in Area 2C and Area 3A of assisted unguided operations and requests consideration by the North Pacific Fishery Management Council of this concern. Linda. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we adopt this language and flag the concerns that we've heard um, asking the Council to take these under consideration and consider action to address these concerns. I'll second that. And we have consensus on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next, at number 10, is the staff uh, requests you to direct us to prepare the IPHC regulations for 2017 for your review and final approval uh, for submission to the two contracting parties. 
Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, proceed with that. I'll second that. And we have consensus on that as well, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next, the staff asks you to specify the location and date of the 2019 annual meeting, uh, noting that uh, the meeting for that year is scheduled to take place in Canada. The dates on the screen, 28 January to 1 February 2019, are recommended by the staff. And again, it will be in Victoria. Jim? Just a second. And we have agreement and consensus on that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So that is uh, the 2019 meeting, will be, the annual meeting will take place here in Victoria, and the dates are 28 January to 1 February 2019. Next, we ask you to adopt the IPHC meetings calendar for 2017 to 2019 which is being displayed on the screen and on the webinar. I'll note for those listening that uh, meetings coming up during this year, uh, the SRB is planning to meet in June and September. The Management Strategy Advisory Board, MSAB, is meeting in May and October. The Commission Work Meeting is currently scheduled for the third week of Dece uh, September excuse me, in Bellingham. The Research Advisory Board plans to meet in November in Seattle, and the interim meeting for 2017 is scheduled for the 28th and 29th of November in Seattle. The next annual meeting, a year from now, is the 22nd to the 26th of January, 2018, in Portland. Mr. Chair, I'd move to adopt the IPHC meetings calendar 2017 to 19. I would second that, and we have consensus on that, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next uh, up is election of the chair and vice chair for the coming year. Linda. Mr. Chairman, I would nominate Commissioner Balsander to chair the to be the 2017-2018 chair. Um, and we have consensus on that as well, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Noting for the audience that Commissioner Balsiger elected as chair for 2017 to 20, 2017 to 2018. Um, I would nominate uh, Mr. Ryle for vice chair. Second. And we have consensus on that as well, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Noting that uh, Commissioner Ryle has been elected as vice chair for 2017 to 2018. Uh, the last couple items are direction from you to the staff. The first is to, re to prepare the report of the 93rd session of the IPHC annual meeting. That's this meeting, AM 93. And so we ask your direction to prepare the report. And that would be using the format uh, that we uh, introduced with the report of the interim meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move that we direct the staff to produce that uh, uh, the report using our new format. I look forward to seeing how that reads. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We have consensus on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the last thing on our list is the news releases announcing the results of this meeting. As we have in, in recent years, we have a, news, a short news release planned for release this morning, which will include the catch limits adopted for each of the regulatory areas as well as the season dates. A uh, longer news release will follow probably next week uh, that we will coordinate with you before release and that will describe in greater detail all of the actions taken at this meeting. So we're asking your permission to proceed with that plan for the news releases. Thank you, Steve. I so move and direct staff to uh, undertake to develop that news release for review by the chair and vice chair and we have consensus on that. So um, I think that's the, the last part of the various uh, regulations and catch limits that we need to consider and all the other motions we just went through. I'm looking to see if there's um, public comment at this point. Any questions? Blake.
morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Please. Yep. I don't need this. As Chairman of PAG, I've been compelled to adhere to the request of our membership to put on record that PAG takes exception to the comments made by the co-chair, the Canadian co-chair, uh, yesterday uh, when ad addressing a question by Can you hear me now? Okay. As chairman, as I said, as chairman of the PAG, I've been compelled to adhere to our membership's request to, for the record, take exception to the comments made by the Canadian chairman of the conference board yesterday when trying to address a question by Commissioner Alverson regarding cooperation between the conference board and the PAG. Uh, perhaps Mr. Lane forgot neglected or was unaware that on three occasions a delegate from the Canadian side of the conference board came into our PAG meetings to advise us as to the conference board's idea for uh, season opening and closing dates. Uh, the second time the gentleman came in was to advise us in writing, and I still have it, as to what the conference board's recommendations were going to be for catch limits and at that particular time we were having a presentation by uh, another gentleman so he had to come back a third time in order to get our recommendations particularly for area 2b and then over the years the past few years PAG has always welcomed a representative from area 2a representing commercial fishermen down there to express the concerns of that particular area before any decision making or discussions were were made it's over the years that I've been here, PAG has always and will continue to have an open mind, an open set of ears for dialogue with the conference board, for to exchange ideas, thoughts, and, uh, and dialogue. So I just wanted to clear that up and, and hopefully answered uh, Mr. Alverson's question in more detail and assure the commission and a new executive director that we will always be open for dialogue with the conference board or anybody else. Thank you. Thanks, Blake, uh, for providing that clarification. I think Russell. It's Russell Cameron, uh, UFAWU uh, rep here and uh, BC Fisherman. I'd just like to thank the com or the uh, the uh, commissions for a, for a hard job well done, I thought, so thank you. And I'd, I'd like to say to the uh, science, main science staff, Dr. Tim Lower and Alan Hicks and Ian Stewart and Ray Webster and Joseph Plans, that it, it, in 2B we're losing some faith in the science when, when what we're seeing year after year and, and the fishing we're taking is so much over what the blue line is. And I'd like to ask you to to um, think about that, that this year and, and try and figure out how to explain to us um, what's going on uh, with regard to that seeming disconnect between the uh, science advice, the catch limits, and then the increasing, increasing level in the survey and uh, and fishery. So anyway, that's a challenge to you for, for this year to convince some stubborn old fishermen uh, what's going on. Thanks, Russell. Are there any other questions uh, from the audience? Steve, are there any online? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, no questions from online. I have one more from the audience. My name is Kit Dernal. I'm with uh, Pacific Seafood Group, specifically in Seward. Uh, there were a the few things that were noticeably missing in this meeting, uh, specifically with the Blue Book. We did have a little bit harder time negotiating through the lack of data in the Blue Book. I never thought I'd say that. But um, if we had some of that accessible during our meetings, say, you know, fully printed copies, 
uh, at the PAG or at the conference board that could be distributed worth not having to distribute to every single individual. That would definitely be helpful. Uh, and then another notable difference for this meeting was we never saw any of the sport cut uh, dates, slot limits, um, uh, days off, things like that. And because they are another user group, I feel like we might have you know, missed something if, since we did not have that uh, material access to us. So in the future, maybe consider those two things for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments uh, about what sort of information that you're seeking. And um, I think that um, the IHP staff have recorded that. I think we had provided some as well. Uh, my name is Richard Yamada. I'm representing the Alaska Charter Association. On the commissioner's recommendation to the council regarding uh, the unguided sports sector, uh, it's been, you know, uh, the uh, at least we have not been consulted as to how that proposal came up, and uh, it stated that the guided sector had recommended uh, that something uh, that we should look at the unguided sector. Uh, it's something that we were not consulted with. Uh, and I think there has been concern uh, in this, this, the sports sector, uh, the, the division between unguided and guided, it's always been a concern to somehow renew, reunite the recreational sector in Alaska. But uh, I think that the concern has come from many other groups besides the, the guided sector. It's come from Coast Guard and safety issues, um, from, from the, uh, the enforcement divisions on regulating unguided and guided sports. And there's been a lot of issues uh, are, um, around this growing unguided sector. But um, the recommendation seems like it's um, in, been initiated by the guided sports sector. And um, I'd like to um, just go on the record that uh, there are other interested parties um, looking at this issue besides just a guided sport. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Not seeing anyone else. Um, Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you for closing comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will have a few brief comments. and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, once again, uh, this is, this is my favorite place for a halibut commission meeting. The city of Victoria is splendid. The Canadians are uh, to a fault kind and, 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 and nice to us uh, Americans when we come up here. Uh, not that they're not in Vancouver, but it's notable in Victoria. They're happy to see us around, and it, it makes for a pleasant meeting. Uh, I'd like to recognize the hard work of the halibut commission staff. Uh, we do have a new executive director who... Uh, probably in the room here, you didn't see him say very much. I like his style. You know, he's quiet here, but he is a force uh, driving the staff, so that's good. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, so we have to thank them. The staff put in a lot of time. They turn out a lot of documents uh, during the meeting for us, make corrections, and uh, they uh, have always been good, and they have not fallen down on that. We have a great scientific staff. I'm entirely behind them. The advisory bodies, the, the PAB, I guess we'll call them now, and the conference board uh, are very important to us. We've been hearing that uh, per, perhaps the commission isn't following all of the recommendations all of the time, and trust me, we look at those very carefully. That's a very valuable input to that, so thank you for the time that you put in there. I also want to thank the agency people here, uh, the agency staff from both governments. We've got uh, DFO in the United States. We've got uh, agency people from four different United States here, uh, from two of the fishery management councils in the United States. I guess we could say from four nations. And, and we need all of that input, so thanks for showing up here. It makes a lot of difference when those uh, views are represented. Most of all, I want to thank the commissioners. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a long time, and it occurs to me we'd actually I don't recognize them, and particularly this year, uh, we have two new commissioners who I'm grateful to have, but 
we have two that were here last year we didn't expect to leave. So Jeff Kaufman, he's gone. Uh, David Boys is gone. They're not gone from the process. They're here. But failing to recognize the commissioners on a yearly basis is probably wrong. So Ted is a solid person. He doesn't say much either in front of people, but he is a force. Uh, Jake, I'm glad, is here. Uh, Bob, we've known for a long time, and Lyndon. They're both very important to me. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not for for suggesting that we won't all be back next year because maybe we will, but in the event they aren't, uh, thanks for, for doing what you did. This has probably been the most difficult meeting to chair uh, for a decade at least. Uh, I disagreed with Paul on some things and it was not easy to get past that, so I applaud his diplomacy. Uh, I hope we can still be good friends and I, th I thank him for doing that and I look forward to seeing him another year. Thank you. Um, Jim, thanks very much for all those comments. It's uh, almost pretty much what I was going to say across the board. Um, it's clear that uh, there's a, a lot of thought and, uh, well, for lack of a better word, passion around halibut. Who knew such a, a big flat fish would be so important? But there clearly is a lot of interest in halibut. Um, it's clear from all the comments that when people get together here that they think about the resource. And um, over the years here, we've had um, a lot quality uh, scientific advice provided to us so that we can all consider what that means. It's uh, a challenging resource to manage. It's over a, a huge uh, geographical area from California up into the Bering Sea. Uh, those fish have a habit of moving around. Trying to figure out how they move is an ongoing challenge for us all of how they migrate, reproduce, decide when where they're going to go. And um, we've made, I think, large strides in putting together uh, a research uh, plan. Not that I'm saying it wasn't one in the past, but I see from the work that's uh, gone forward in the last uh, year, there's a lot of clarity about the things that uh, we're seeking to have um, some more resolution on. That research plan was developed not in isolation. We've put in place a number of, of subsidiary uh, advisory bodies, whether it be the Research Advisory Board, uh, the um, Scientific uh, Review uh, Board as well, and um, also all the comments and questions that come from the audience that have all uh, factored into decisions that we as uh, commissioners make to um, get to this point where, uh, as you saw, it took us roughly, I think it's about 11 now, we, an hour and a half to go through all those various um, catch limits and uh, regulatory proposals. It's a, somewhat of a complicated management system, but uh, that's what it takes to uh, manage this resource. Um, I think all the same people that uh, Jim did as well, um, and so I won't repeat that, but I want also to, similar to Jim, to uh, thank uh, the work of my fellow commissioners, and when I mean that, uh, both on Canada and the U.S. side. They've all got us to this place with your wise advice, and with that I would uh, close the 93rd uh, meeting of, annual meeting of the IPHC, and have a good trip home, and we'll see you back here in Victoria in uh, in 2019.